almost any speech that you give will benefit if you anchor it with a well-edited story. But how do you edit a story well? And I'm going to give you three really fast steps. First, just write it down, probably chronologically. Second, you want to tear it down to the bare bones. You want to streamline it. And then the third part is you're actually going to add certain things back in to enhance it and build it up. Today, we're concentrating on that second step of streamlining it. Because if you can get rid of all of the clutter, all of the confusion, anything that would distract your listener, you'll make your story clearer and more powerful. So we're going to look at two literary elements in your story. The first one is the plot. In any story, certain things happen, right? First this happened, then this happened, then this happened. But in order to streamline the story, look at each event separately and ask yourself some questions. Is this event essential to tell the story? If I took it out, would anybody mind that? Would, would it make the story not make sense if I took it out? And, and also, sometimes in a story you'll have certain things that kind of repeat themselves. The same thing happens again and again. So can I combine several of the incidents into one thing? In Craig Valentine's signature story about uh, leaving his job in order to pursue his dream of speaking, he actually had multiple conversations with his wife about whether he should leave this high paying job. But he, in the final story version, condenses it down into one conversation and that makes it less confusing, easier for the listener to follow, and ultimately makes the story more powerful. The second literary element that you want to look at is characters, and it follows the same set of questions. In any story, you're going to have several characters, probably. Look at each one individually. Is this character absolutely essential to the telling of the story? If I took them out, would the story still make sense? And if you have several characters who all do or say more or less the same thing, can I really combine them into one character? Because that will make the story easier to follow. It will be less confusing for your listener. What I want to do is to tell you a piece of a story that I give from time to time. And I'm going to put a couple of extra details in it. And then when I finish, we're going to take them out and I'm going to show you why and how it actually stream, streamlines the story. In, the, in 1972, I was a college student, and I was um, at UCLA, but during the summer, I came and lived with my parents who lived just east of downtown LA, just west of downtown LA. And on one summer's evening, I decided to go out and visit some friends who were staying on campus. About 11 o'clock, I headed home, but when I got about halfway, to the Crenshaw off-ramp near where it crosses West Adams, there was this loud bang under the hood of my car, and immediately the lights started dimming. I knew I had to get off the freeway, but the next stop was Watts. It was the scene of the 1965 race riots, and still the home of the Crips and the Blots and a battleground. So I exited the freeway, on a dark street, not knowing where I was going, but up ahead of me, there was a police car, and I honked them down. They pulled over, and I said, I need a service station. My car is dying on me here. So the first policeman said, why don't you go up three blocks and turn right? And the second policeman said, it's the only station that's open this time of night. So I did what they said, and I pulled up the three blocks, turned right first, I passed a shell station and it was closed. And then a, a, a Phillips 66, but it was closed too. And finally, I got to a, a Chevron and it was open, so I pulled in. There were some men who were arguing, two white men and a black man, and they were yelling at each other. And one of the white men said, I am going, to, going home and getting my gun and I am coming back for you. And the second guy said, wait for me because I'm coming too pulled over to the side where there was a pay phone booth, took out my coins to make a call, and said, Daddy, I 
and broken down once, and you come get me. Okay, that's my story with a little extra baggage. Let me tell you the parts that I would take out. First, you remember that I was going down the freeway, and I got to Crenshaw, near where it crosses West Adams. If I were talking to a group from LA, or a group that I was positive knew the territory, that would be a good detail to include, because it gives a very vivid picture of how dire my circumstances really were. But to a group out in Riverside who may not know the area at all, it's just confusing. And as soon as I say that, your mind probably went to, well, she said Crenshaw. Maybe I need to remember that for some reason. I wonder what Crenshaw is like. And now your mind is off a little bit and not really fully listening to what I'm saying anymore. So I would take that detail out. Then I told you I got onto the street and I spotted a police car. And I honked them down. And the policeman rolled down the window. The first policeman said, you need to go these directions. And the second policeman said, it's the only station that's open. But you know what? Do I really need both policemen? Can I not combine what they said? Go up here and turn because it's the only station that's open and have one policeman for you to follow? Mm -hmm. It is more streamlined and easier. I followed his directions, right? I went and I passed the first gas station. It was closed. The second one was closed. Do you really care? Does it move the story forward? If I take it out, do you still understand? Do you still get the essential point? It's actually easier to focus on the essential point when I get rid of the clutter, rid of the baggage. So I'm going to take out those two gas stations and leave only the third one, which was open. That's the one I need. So I pull in, and there are some men who are fighting. Two white guys and a black guy and they're yelling at each other, and both of the white men have something to say. I combine them into one when I tell the story, because essentially they're moving the story forward in the same way. They're both saying, we're going for the gun. Okay, So if I combine what they say into one, then you only have one man to follow. Those are some of the ways that you can streamline a story, and when you do that, when you take out the clutter, if you ask yourself, is each element, both plot and character, essential to the telling of the story? If I take it out, does it still make sense? And proceed with that, you will have a clearer, more powerful, well-edited